Hey there, so today I want to compare these two mini PCs right here. We have the GMK Tech KB2 Max and the B-Link SCR5 Max. Now the reason I'm comparing these two systems is because they are very similar in price around the $300 to $350 price range. And both of these take the chips that they have inside and pretty much maximize the TDP that they have allocated to them to get the most out of the chips in here. Now the GMK Tech here has an i5-11320H and the SRE5 Max has the Ryzen 7 5800H. Two drastically different chips that are really not even in the same performance category. But we're comparing them because of the fact that this is really where the market is at right now in terms of price. This is about as cheap as it gets for an Intel system that isn't just rocking a Celeron level PU. And I think it's really going to show you how Intel has dramatically lost the mini PC battle just as the market is starting to blow up. If we just talk about the CPU portion of the systems, we see already a pretty drastic difference. The i5 is, of course, a four core, eight thread Tiger Lake based system. Now, four core, eight thread is pretty much a dying breed of CPUs at this point. But it really seems like if you want an Intel system that actually has a good iGPU at the lower end of the market, you're pretty much stuck having to go with Tiger Lake. As a point of comparison, the Mini Forum UN1245 that I have here that has an i5 12450H. It is an eight core 12 thread CPU limited to just 45 watts on the TDP, which is the default configuration of this mini farm system. It actually does not end up performing that much better than the CPU that's in here, as you can see by the Cinebench 2024 numbers that you're seeing right now. In fact, the i5 12450H is overall not really that much different in terms of performance and it falls behind the Ryzen 5 5500U and that system has only a 48 EU version of the Intel graphics. So pretty much half of the iGPU that is in this i5-11320H. And these are the closest price competitors to the Ryzen 7 that we have here. Now, if we throw in the Ryzen 7 in this Cinebench 2024 test, well, we see a absolutely massive jump in terms of the multi-core performance. Of course, the one area that Intel is still dominating in is that single core performance. Both the 11320H and the 12450H actually produce some fantastic scores in terms of single core performance. But what's really holding back the i5 12450H is the fact that it just needs far more power to actually feed all those cores. And a lot of the systems that you're gonna find this chip in are not going to be feeding it enough power. You have to keep that in mind. So really the biggest advantage that the i5 11320H actually has is that the iGPU that it has, the 96EU version is pretty much going to be better than most of the other versions of this iGPU on any other systems because all other i5s pretty much have the 80 EU version, which means that there's going to already be a reduced level of performance. So let's see what the absolute best that Intel currently has can actually do. So to start off the game comparisons here, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 running with the built-in benchmark. Now, both of these are running with the lowest in-game graphic settings, and we are using FSR with the performance preset. And as you can see, there is pretty much a night and day difference here, where a lot of people might consider the performance of Red Dead Redemption 2 to be acceptable on the SRE5 Max with the Ryzen 7 5800H. The i5 here is really starting to struggle and it's not producing a great result here now it does not seem to be the cpu limiting the experience here as you can see the i5 is not seeing 100 percent utilization but its built-in igpu is so that seems to be the limiting factor here the 96 eu version of the iris xe just is not able to compete with the fully maxed out Radeon 8. And it really just shows the stark difference between having a AMD iGPU and an Intel one, because this is 
pretty much as good as it gets for Intel right now. They're still only using the 96E version of the Iris Xe as their highest end version. So if you're on 12th gen or 13th gen, you're not looking to see much of an improvement at all from this level of performance. Now, if we take a look at Mafia 2, the definitive edition, this is another title that really shows some major differences between the two systems here. While the Ryzen 7 5800H is able to provide a very nice consistent FPS with 1% lows that are at a more than acceptable range, the i5 is struggling to produce any semblance of a playable experience at the exact same graphics settings. And this is already with the lowest in-game settings for both systems. The i5 is pretty much just falling apart here and it really seems to be more of a driver issue than anything else. The hardware is capable of producing better FPS than this. It just really does not seem to have proper support of this title. Overall, a very disappointing showing. Now, one title that actually had a pretty rock solid showing on both systems is Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord. Now, the Ryzen 7 here is actually able to produce a higher FPS average and better 1% lows, but both systems actually gave a pretty decent experience overall here. And you'll see that the i5 is not seeing its full CPU utilized. But the GPU is at 100% load, so again, that ends up being the limiting factor here. But in this specific title, the experience is at least going to be decent on both systems, though noticeably better on the AMD system. Still, it is at least a playable showing from Intel, though not the most ideal specifically with those 1% lows. Though keep in mind that these two systems are at the same price point. So there's really not much of a reason to go with the i5, at least if this is a title that you're specifically looking to play. And again, this is going to be the case for pretty much any implementation of the 96 EU version of the Iris Xe. So if you're on 12th gen and 13th gen, if you still have the 96 EU version, you're still going to be limited. Now, Cyberpunk is a title where both systems really ended up struggling to produce much of a playable experience. But interestingly enough, this is one of those titles that actually showed the closest levels of performance between the two systems. Now, again, this is with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR at the performance preset. You can go all the way down to ultra performance, but at that point, you're really sacrificing a lot. But the overall result between the two systems ended up being identical. Now, both of them kind of giving you a result that lets you know that this is not really going to be a great experience on either system. But this was actually, again, one of the closest showings that we have seen between the two systems so far. But a title that showed some pretty strong differences between the two systems is the newly updated Counter-Strike 2. Overall, you can see that the 1% lows and the FPS average is noticeably better on the Ryzen 7, while the i5 here is showing some pretty noticeable issues in terms of the 1% lows and those frame time charts look pretty brutal. Now again, the CPU is not seeing 100% utilization, which means it's not really the limiting factor here. Though the Intel system is also not seeing 100% utilization of its iGPU. Now, of course, not seeing 100% utilization of the CPU doesn't necessarily mean that one or two cores can't be limiting the overall experience. And you will see that we are actually hitting some higher clocks on the 5800H. But the thing is, is that the big difference in terms of 1% lows and the overall consistency in the frame times is leading me to believe that this might just be a driver related issue and less so related to the hardware. While there is a difference between the 96EU version of the Iris Xe and the Radeon 8, this is such a stark difference that it's leading me to believe that this is more of an issue of drivers than anything else. Of course, we'll have to wait and see if Intel releases anything that might fix this problem. But as it stands right now, if you're looking to play this title, Intel just kind of seems out of the question, at least when it comes to their iGPUs. And again, this is going to be the same if we're looking at 12th gen or 13th gen. Bex wise, the Iris Xe 96 EU version has not seen an update in multiple generations already. It is almost always going to be the limiting factor. One thing that I do try to stress a lot is that these iGPUs a lot of the time are better for playing older titles that you might not have ever gotten around to playing more so than actually loading up brand new modern titles. 
With that being the case though, here we're taking a look at Metro Last Light, a fantastic game that you can always go back and play, especially due to just how cheap you can get it. And here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings on both systems, you'll see that we get some far closer results between the two systems. So again, the Ryzen 7 is taking the lead here. So the U1% lows and the averages on both systems are decent enough that you're going to be able to actually get a nice experience here. But again, both systems being at the same price and a lot of the times just cheaper with the Ryzen 7, there is very little reason to really go with the i5 right now. And Intel also just does not have any other system that really competes at this price point with an iGPU that isn't an even more cut down version of this. And really between the two systems, just because a title is a few years old now does not necessarily mean it's going to be the greatest experience. As you can see here with Rise of the Tomb Raider, on both systems it's not exactly spectacular, but the i5 is seeing its 1% lows finally dip below 30 and that's not exactly great, though again both systems not exactly spectacular. Now. Rainbow Six Siege is quite a few years old at this point, but it is still one of the most popular games out there. And both systems are going to give you some nice results in this game, though of course the Ryzen 7 again is producing noticeably better 1% lows, and you do see an improvement in our FPS average as well. But still, neither system really gives a bad experience. And this is a title that actually seems to be properly supported by the Intel driver. And as you can see, the performance difference between the two systems is, while noticeable, not as drastic. And it's really what points towards those moments where you see really, really bad performance out of the Iris XE. It can always really just be brought down to the fact that the drivers just aren't there yet. And while faulty Intel drivers might proved to be a problem with a lot of older titles, it also seems to apply to some brand new ones. I tried to launch the Assassin's Creed Mirage game so that I could do some built-in benchmark testing on the i5 and it just refused to ever launch. And that is with the latest drivers. While on the Ryzen 7 5800H, which isn't even using the most recent preview drivers, it was still able to play the game perfectly fine and even actually give us some pretty playable fps numbers though not ideal one percent lows and that really just seems to be the crux of the issue here where the intel system does not produce as good a performance as the best vega based igpu it cannot compete with rdna 2 or rdna 3 and you're going to run into a lot of issues with modern titles and a lot of older titles and you really can't even expect that those old, older titles will get fixed a lot of these have been ongoing issues for multiple years a lot of the games that were broken when i first started covering the i5 1135g7 almost two years ago now well they're still broken to this day and well, all of that should paint a picture to you on why exactly Intel has effectively lost the mini PC battle. AMD's entire product stack pretty much beats out almost anything that Intel has within this segment, specifically because of the fact that Intel's cores right now are just very power hungry, even with the E cores. A lot of mini PCs try to target a much lower overall tdp due to the smaller size they can't exactly get nice coolers on there so because of that a lot of these chips end up having power limits that are just dramatically lower than what would be ideal and because of that the performance overall seems to tank and all of that on top of a premium on the price 11th gen is really just staying relevant due to the fact that it is about the only thing that is reaching these lower price points and the only 12th gen that seems to be competing in this segment has an igpu that can't really do anything and such a low tdp that all those extra cores are essentially going to waste and all of this really just shows how the sre5 max is currently the budget mini pc king while it pretty much teeters on the edge of being considered budget the performance lead that it has over pretty much the entirety of its competition kind of just makes it the dominant choice for practically anybody in the market right now